Hello, this is Mike of Neil Enough Dice. This is the Kerbal Space Program. Right, I'm just going to quickly nip into the tracking station. We're going to go have a look at um, Minmus. So, uh, last time, what I'd done is I'd, I'd chucked in a whole bunch of uh, satellites. I probably didn't need to come here and actually go look at the thing. This is my low-level scanny thing. Um, so this is doing low-level radar. It's an ideal altitude. Uh, as you can see, it's scanning away. Uh, so I'm just going to go into map mode. And so I've got these three satellites. So that's low, that's multi, and that's high. Um, and that's an orbit I need to do at some point. And that's a uh, Kerbal I need to get rescued. Mm, okay, stuff to do. Anyway, um, the other two, the, li the, the high and the multi, I've made to be very planar. Very planar, very polar. Right, very up and down. Um, I haven't done that with the low level one, simply because it's got such a wide kind of angle um, that it doesn't matter. At least I don't think it does. Um, so if I bring up the big map, uh, which takes a while to load, alas, but there you go. Uh, you can see that I've got good poles coverage. Um, so that's fine. And I'm getting great swathes of, of territory. Uh, and you can see by the blue, these blue dots are where the orbit's going to be. The, great, the brown dots where the orbit has been, I think. Oh, the, well, I recently changed the orbit. So those, oh, no, no, those, those are correct. Those are where the orbit's been. And so the blue's where it's going to be. And you can see it's crossing over territory I haven't, you know, bits I haven't seen yet. So. Um, and these lovely colors, so all these black and white bits, that's the, the low level. And you can see they're brightly colored. Uh, these are the high, that's the high density scan uh, from the, the outermost satellite. Uh, so I'm going to get lots of lovely, lovely detail. Which is neat. Looking at the slope for no good reason at all. That's pretty cool. I do have, there's an anomaly of some description over there, which I, sh I shall have to go send somebody to look at. I was kind of hoping to get contracts for them, but I don't seem to be getting contracts for them. I don't know why. Um, and I'm even getting um, a fair amount of biome data, but obviously that's, you know, I've literally just put these things uh, in just now, so it's going to take a little while for them to grab all the data. So that's going to be useful. I've got two or three biomes I still have to grab for science purposes, but uh, we can check that out later. I wonder what that is. It's right on the edge of Highlands. Okay. Mm. And what I like about having uh, done these scans is that I can then justify. Um, wait, 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 wait. Let's focus minutes. I can open up this, and then I can feel entirely justified in, in you know, going. Oh, I need to, I need to get this biome. Well, I know exactly where it is, and so that's great. So that's that sorted. So that's, I mean, just as I, as I take time, um, that's going to um, just improve. That map's going to improve and improve and improve. So hurrah. Um, my MUN maps are also pretty good. They're, they're pretty complete now. Bio maps, just about complete, complete. Um, the other ones are all right. I could actually possibly go get some science off them. Um, 
Well, that's aggravating. Every so often, there's a, a glitch where the you see the, you see how those are floating way above everything. That's not where they actually are. So this may cause problems. Uh, what I've decided to do, um, I'm going to what, what I want to do right now is I want to. Uh, as you saw, there was there was an anomaly uh, on Minmus, and there's actually a few on the Mun. And one of the things you meant to do with uh, anomalies is you send a, a been there, done that scanner, a B, a B, BTDT scanner to go have a look at it. So I thought that might be a thing to do um, for my own uh, little anomaly. Um, basically, where that would be if he was in the right place, he'd be down on the ground. I don't know why it's way up in the air. So I can see this one, these these anomalies are just labelled anomaly. Anomaly, 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 anomaly. Except that one, which is labelled pyramids. Uh, possibly, and now that's probably because that's the one I've actually gone and visited with my anomaly scanner. Uh, so basically, I'm, I want to send a, 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 a BT... DT scanner off that one. So I have got my first science rover. My, <laughs> I'd rather ridiculously call this first science rover 2, which is stupid. I could have called it second science rover, but then it'll be lower down in the, in the order and I have to go looking for it. Uh, this is my jet powered one, so I'm, I'm chucking a scientist in there. Uh, so I'm going to go have a look at that with the, the BTDT scanner and see what that does exactly. Uh, I may or may not, I don't know whether I'll actually have to... Oh, that's interesting. Uh, put the brakes on. Oh, brakes. Seismic scan. I haven't done a seismic scan here. Wow. Hmm. Uh, right, so, instrument window, I'm going to bring up the instrument window, and we're going to start the VT, ooh, identified structure, monolith. Alright, so taking the brakes off. Ooh. Ah, we had to stage the engine, so let's turn off the throttle. Stage the engine. So what this instrument thing is doing is it's showing me all the, the, the useful things I know, my latitude, my longitude, terrain and all that. But it's also showing me a little view of my monolith. Let's go off the runway right, kind of perpendicular, because I think that's going to be the safest for not falling down. There we go. So now I suspect, um, if we go to the big map mode, and I change this back to being curly. Oh, it's just down as anomaly still. Well, unless that's. Oh, I see. That's a different anomaly. That is, those are that's a different anomaly. I should really like pay attention to what's going on. Um, so let's zoom in. So I think that anomaly there on that island, that is very likely to be um, the abandoned airbase on that island. So I could send something over there 
and do a scan on it. Um, let's just go a little bit faster. some more well, well maybe it's not an anomaly in any sense of the word interestingly but it's showing up as a monolith um, and that's definitely the thing I'm moving towards because that's the flag that I put there How very interesting. So it looks like I'm going to have to, I want to go have a check of that, but there's also, can I, can I you know, I just wonder if I can move, because there's something nearby, there's another anomaly nearby, let's zoom out. And uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. Oh, well, we seem to be moving again. So I don't know what happened there. Uh, I, have, I have no idea whether any of that recorded. Ha! So not, well, well, I'll think of something. Uh, okay, so I'm within a kilometre. And I'm just getting... I, I don't know whether that's all I'm ever going to get or whether that's, like, the view... Because uh, obviously it's not shifting as I move left and right. That's obviously centered on. Ooh. Oh right. I think the anomaly. That's really interesting. So I think maybe the anomaly that it found is in fact the the KSC. The Kerbal Space Center. Um, I just want to grab. I don't really want the big map. I just want. I want the the local map. So it's beginning to look like, because I thought it was the monolith that he was finding. But it's actually found the Kerbal Space Center, it looks like. And so it's showing me a, a crude representation of the Kerbal Space Center. How very strange. Yeah, I don't have any other options on that one. So maybe the Kerbal Space Center was the anomaly the whole time. Then you kind of wonder what this is. <laughs> yeah, just beginning to see that in the in the in the distance there. Just kind of see it poking up. Assuming you're watching high def, and assuming YouTube's um, compression hasn't completely destroyed, uh, made it invisible. <laughs> So it's it's centered apparently it's it's interested in the flagpole. Um, but it's found all the other structures which will be, you know, the various other bits and pieces of the Kerbal Space Center. How very interesting. Whoa. Now it's found. Now it's decided the monolith is the important thing. Okay, and that may be the best. Um, it's only ever going to show me that because I, I guess it depends on uh, like it, like for the for the KSC. You notice even though I was going further away, that that view of it in here wasn't changing. So even if I go right up next to it, I suspect it's still going to say monolith.
So I suspect I'm not getting any new information about me monolith here. Oh! There's me! That's really interesting. So that's actually a real-time preview. So it's including a real-time preview of myself. And that's it showing... Okay, so it's found the tracking station. So it's, it's, it's finding different things. Hello, Monolith. Nothing particularly interesting happening there, I think. So there you go. Well, that's that's kind of interesting. I'm going to have to do the same with the um, that out there, which I suspect is the abandoned airfield, and I don't even know what that one is. That might be worth sending a, a, a small plane to check. Um, maybe even I don't know, because I can probably just do a flyby with the BT TD. BTDT uh, and that should get me uh, everything I need to know but I think this monolith is actually just part of the, effectively part of the KSC and the KSC is is the anomaly that I was I was detecting that well isn't that interesting okay so I found um, I've now sent my, this is my simple science plane, uh, with Jeb Lai Kerman, and I've chucked the BT what's it scanner, um, on the bottom of that, so that, that's it there. And I'm heading towards that nearby thing in the mountains. And it's just come up. I've, I'm, I'm about 12k away. And it's just come up with something, but I don't know what. No structures found. Um, now, I remember that the in, in the, kind of the settings, it, it kind of says that you want about... Um, you want to be within about 5 kilometers. To, to get a good reading. So it's possible when I get to that point, uh, that's what I'm going to get there. I've, I made a custom waypoint, as you can see, which is what I'm heading towards. Ooh. No, nothing yet. Uh, unfortunately, this plane I've made doesn't have a very good amount of um, pitch control. Uh... So I'm going to crash into the mountain. Come on. Yeah, I'm going to crash into the mountain. So that's unfortunate. Nuts. That's not really what I wanted to do at all. Clearly, I need something with with better um, pitch control. All right, can you actually EVA? Right, you can. was slightly irritating. So, um, yeah, I guess we're going to have to go on foot a bit. Um,
Hopefully the mountains aren't too steep, but I would actually quite like to get a look at this thing. I have to go check. I don't. I can't remember that my space plane was that awful last time. I've, I'm, it's been a while since I flew it, but I didn't realize you had like almost no pitch control. Um, it was kind of enough to get me here most of the way, as you can see. Um, I'm not getting that anymore. Nothing terribly obvious. Initially, I'm still three kilometers away. And to be perfectly honest, I might not be heading towards the anomaly. Um, oh, it's on the other side of that. All right. I wonder if I should actually go back and um, just fly another plane. Right, after quite a lot of a walk, including having to change the waypoint because it turns out I wasn't being very accurate. Uh, still haven't found it. <laughs> it's around here somewhere. Seems to be inside the mountain. I must say, um, oh, hang on. I think that graphical glitch just showed us a bit of a hint. The, the view is quite nice. Like, zoom up. The view is actually quite nice out here in the mountains. But there is a, a slight problem with the, um, the accuracy of the waypoint, because I can only go to a couple of decimal places. Um, accuracy. Uh, and in longitude, lo latitude, longitude, those decimal places can actually be quite uh, a distance. Now see if I can ah, I can't see it because it's under the ground. See, there's our monolith, which I can't see because it is, in fact, under the ground. So there you go. I feel entirely justified in, in using weird graphical glitches. Um, if the thing you're looking for is in fact buried underneath the ground, which which is a bit silly when you get down to it. Let's get back. <laughs> so I can't actually see what's going on there. That's a bit of a shame, after all that. Not actually going to be able to be able to have a look at it because it's underneath the ground, and I can't. I can only get the camera there uh, by accident rather than deliberately. So there it is, in all its glory. So there is a monolith under there, but I just can't see it. So there you go. Uh, where, where's my guy? Where, where am I? I've now lost myself. There we are. Uh, sorry about that, Jeb. Um, that was a really long walk. Um, but the views, when the camera isn't glitching, um, quite impressive. There you go. <laughs> Oh, that achieved very little. So there's a monolith buried under the ground. We're going to have to send an archaeological team out there to dig it out and see what it looks like. Uh, or something. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, he seems happy enough. Even though his feet are kind of stuck. Kind of in the ground there. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> uh, thanks very much for watching uh, this kind of flailing about looking for anomalies. Uh, like and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos. Come visit me at neonatice.com. Until next time, uh, reach the stars, uh, even if occasionally you have to dig in the dirt to find what you're looking for. <laughs>